Barclays Bank, also known as APSA Group, has today launched the APSA Africa Financial Markets Index 2019. This index has been in course for the last three years from 2017, and it evaluates the investment case for Kenya as well as other African countries, beating them against one another across the globe. Kenya's ranking is number three this year with a percentage score of 65%. Kenya's ranking compared to last year remains more or less the same. Now today on Markets Today, we are evaluating what has actually happened to Kenya. What has it done better? Where has it actually done worse compared to the previous year and compared to other countries? My name is Mbitha Mwema. I'm your host today for Markets Today on Metropole TV. Joined with us for this conversation is Mr. Anthony Kirui, who is the head of global markets at Bak Place Kenya, or in other words, APSA Group. Welcome to the show, Mr. Anthony Kirui. Now let us start. What is the APSA Africa Financial Markets 2019 Index? Okay, so the Financial Markets Index, the uh, APSA Financial Markets Index, is a partnership with OMFIF, uh, which is geared towards driving financial market development across markets in Africa. Uh, this is the third year in which we've launched the index, and the index takes a look at six different pillars uh, at measures of performance of the different countries, okay. uh, varying from market depth to uh, local regulation, tax um, uh, agreements that have been put in place towards serving and supporting the deepening of the financial market. Mr. Kiri, based on the six core parameters that this index actually evaluates Kenya versus other African countries, we noticed a couple of improvements with regards to the local domestic component. How are local investors viewing Kenya at this point today? And what is their outlook for the future? Well, Kenya has actually managed to maintain its position. Uh, it is actually the, the only country that has actually managed to maintain its position uh, compared to last year, uh, coming in at third at 65% uh, behind Mauritius and South Africa. So 65 percentage points, is that similar to what it scored last year during the ranking? Was it higher? Correct. It is exactly the same score, exactly the same although score. a different mix in performance across the six pillars. Okay. So what we've seen is, compared to last year, the, the pension of our assets actually grew uh, to $10.5 billion. This was an increase of 17%, which in itself is impressive. However, what we've also noted is the percentage of uh, equity market turnover to total market capitalization still stands at about 6%. Uh, and on the fixed income side, it's at about 17.5% uh, as a percentage of total outstanding stock. Uh, when you consider the um, fixed income, for instance, that South Africa, it's about 190% uh, as a percentage of turnover, as a percentage of outstanding stock. Uh, Nigeria is at about 58%. Uh, there is room for growth for us. I think earlier in the presentation we did hear um, uh, the NSC CEO, Jeff Odundo, actually say the ambition for uh, the NSC is to grow the turnover to 15%. Uh, actions around creating and setting up the new ATS platform uh, for uh, trading on the NSC uh, serve to also support inter intraday transactions. Uh, and help to support turnover uh, in the NSC, which should help to bolster our performance in subsequent uh, uh, reviews and index reports. Okay. What are your views with regards to the rate cap on bond holdings? Do you expect the yield curve to go up or to go down? And in whichever case it goes, do you expect the bond holdings for fund managers as well as for banks to go down, I mean to be underwater or to be profitable? So I think one of the things we noted was there was a rise in pensionable assets by about 17% to $10.5 billion, okay. uh, which is a positive for Kenya. Um, what we have noted, however, is the level of turnover in the equities market as a percentage of market capitalization still stands at about 6%. Which is low? Which is relatively low uh, compared to some of, the, some of the other peers in the market. But that being said, Kenya is also one of the better uh, markets in terms of performance and overall turnover in the equities market. His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta last week reverted the Finance Bill 2019 to the legislature. And his instruction, or rather his directive, was to eradicate in totality the statement with regards to the rate cap. The eradication of the rate cap, what does that mean for the banks and the economy in general? I think the President did highlight uh, some of the things that he he also felt that uh, the rate cap had 
perhaps uh, hampered in terms of uh, growth opportunities, access to credit, especially to the SMEs uh, and uh, medium-sized enterprises. So it's, it's a key aspect of fueling our economic growth, uh, driving credit growth that we're able to allow um, key participants uh, in our economy to access credit and grow and to support our ambitions as a country. Uh, and I think the President was very articulate and very clear around the specific reasons he felt it is important for the interest rate cap to be removed. Thank you very much, Mr. Anthony Curry, for your insights. Do you have any, part, uh, any parting and closing remarks that you would like to make? Thank you once again, Mr. Anthony Kiruri, who's the head of global markets at APSA, or rather Barclays Bank of Kenya, for your time and for your insights. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fantastic report pitting the investment case for Kenya against other markets, but not necessarily looking at your traditional parameters with regards to the macroeconomic parameters or the micros with regards to how the corporates are doing. But it's actually looking at the depth of markets, the accessibility of markets, both by foreign and local investors, and seeing what innovations the market have made over time. Since its inception in 2017, Kenya ranks third compared to its African peers, and there's a huge improvement there. We've seen an improvement with regards to technology and access to markets by the local, uh, by the local investors, rather the domestic economy investing into this marketable opportunities. It's a positive for Kenya. The other thing that we have had with regards to the macro economy, the rate cap conversation continues, and we are awaiting a conversation, or rather a decision, from the MPs come the 29th through to the 1st of November. Now that said, there could be a bit of a risk factor with regards to bond holdings, depending on whether you are a bank or whether you are a fund manager. That is something we are certainly waiting to see what happens, but for now it seems that there could be an overall positive with the potential to actually credit and have access to credit flowing to the SMEs, which are considered to be the backbone of the economy. Thank you for joining us. This is Mbitha Mwema hosting you for Markets Today. Good afternoon.